Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at nuclear fission reactors. So let's get into it. Now, we looked at nuclear fission reactors in National 5 physics, but it's here as a reminder as well. So it says that in both fossil fuel, i.e. thermal power stations and nuclear power stations, heat is used to turn water into steam. This steam then drives turbines which generate electricity. So this is the process by which electricity is made. It then says that the difference in these two power stations arises in how the heat is produced. In fossil fuel power stations, fossil fuels, for example, coal, are burnt to release heat energy. In nuclear power stations, nuclear fission is used to produce heat energy within nuclear fission reactors. So if you look at the picture here, we've got a nuclear reactor on the left hand side, but the right hand side here would be the same for fossil fuel power stations and nuclear power stations. So we've got different things labelled here, we've got something called a concrete shielding which surrounds the reactor, and here we've then got control rods, fuel rods and the moderator, we've then got a water pressurizer here and a condenser over here. It then says at this point that the heat from the reactions turns water into steam, and that steam then travels along this pipe, then the steam drives the turbines here, some of the water from the steam condenses and passes through this condenser and back to here, and because the turbines are moving, the turbines then generate electricity in a generator, and that's then passed to the natural National grid through these electricity pylons so the electricity gets to buildings and homes. Now just show you a simulation to help you understand this. So in a thermal power station such as the one here that uses coal, you would burn coal in order to produce heat which can then heat up the water to produce steam. And that steam then drives the turbine which drives the generator and produces electricity. And you see the energy changes at each stage here, so you've got chemical to heat first of all, then you've got heat to kinetic to drive the turbine, and then you've got kinetic to electrical. And it's very similar for a fossil fuel power station that uses oil as the source. So if you've got oil here and you burn the oil, then you get chemical to heat, then heat to kinetic and kinetic to electrical again. The rest of the steps are the same. And lastly for gas, we could have a gas burner here. So again, we've got the chemical to heat, heat to kinetic and kinetic to electrical. So the fossil fuel power stations are very similar, but here we have the nuclear power station which relies on a nuclear reactor. So you've got uranium pellets, which is your fuel, inside the fuel rods, and it's this first energy change that is different to the ones for the fossil fuel power stations. So instead of chemical to heat, we're not burning the chemicals this time, we're relying on nuclear reactions to produce energy. So our energy change here is nuclear to heat. The nuclear reactions produce energy in the form of heat. So that heat can then heat up the water to produce steam, and that then drives the turbines, so we have heat to kinetic, and then the turbines activate the generator to produce electrical energy. Going back to the notes, it says the neutrons released in a fission reaction are fast moving, and we saw that in the theory video for the chain reaction. A moderator, for example graphite, is used to slow them down and increase the chance of further fissions occurring via a chain reaction. So we use this material called a moderator to slow down neutrons and to prevent more fission reactions from occurring, and that allows us to control the chain reaction going on. So I'll just show you another simulation to help you visualise this. So here we have a sort of zoomed in section of a nuclear reactor, where we've got our control rods up the top, we've got these fuel rods here which are the blue strips that contain the uranium fuel, and then these sections in between is our moderator material. And remember the purpose of the moderator is to slow down the neutrons. So if we click play here, you'll see the instant neutron comes in and causes induced nuclear fission, which causes the splitting of the uranium nuclei when it hits the fuel rods, and then we get the neutrons produced. And you'll see the neutrons are multiplied at each stage in a chain reaction. So after this one we have two, then after this one we have four, and then eight, and so on. And notice how when the neutrons are travelling within the moderator material, they are slowed down. And you can see this more at the first section where it's moving much faster until it hits the moderator. But not only can we control the speed of neutrons in the reactions by using moderator material, we can also lower or raise the control rods here in order to absorb or stop some of the neutrons from actually going on and causing more nuclear fission reactions. So we can limit how much nuclear fission is going on, and therefore how much energy is released in the reaction. So if I lower the control rods to about here this time and then click play, then you'll notice that one of the neutrons is absorbed at this stage, which means that it can no longer go on and cause further fission reactions. So that's about half of our number of neutrons than we had initially being released. Or if we wanted to stop the entire process, we could move the control rods all the way down 
and click play and you'll see that the neutrons can no longer go on, they're just being absorbed by the control rods there. Going back to the notes now, we'll finish by looking at some advantages and disadvantages of nuclear fission reactors. So some advantages are that under normal working conditions, there is no pollution emitted into the atmosphere. And we say that a much smaller mass of fuel is required to produce the same energy output as a fossil fuel power station. So the way I like to think about that is that a small mass of fuel, such as one little pellet of uranium, can produce the same amount of energy as a huge lump of coal. So it's much more fuel efficient in terms of the energy produced for the amount of fuel that you're using. And then we have two disadvantages here. So firstly, the small amount of waste produced is highly radioactive and has a very long half-life, up to hundreds of thousands of years. And another disadvantage is that this means that the radioactive waste must be stored safely, for example underground in a shielded container or underwater, to minimise its effect on us. So it's helpful to remember some advantages and disadvantages of nuclear fission reactors for things like open-ended questions and so on. So remember two advantages are no pollution and smaller mass of fuel required, whereas some disadvantages would be highly radioactive waste with a very long half-life and the challenges involved in storing it safely. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.